degrees Diamonds on my chain so cold, somebody turn up the heat Now you're laying in my bed before you even notice me We feel like we catch a flight and I'm talking overseas it's your boy Gut here with Gut Talk, and we got our special guest today. Yeah, uh, young Sage and his bitch. What's up? All right, Sage, how was your day today? Tell me all about it. Shit, work, work down a little bit, play some Apex, and I'm here. All right, all right well, me? let's get right into it, man. So, what was your upbringing life? What was your life like? You know what I'm saying? Give me the whole nine, every detail you can give. Fuck. So I'm a demigod, so I'm actually not from here. But when what I does that? Wait, wait, hold on. What does that mean? <laughs> so it's basically it's my persona. His name is Chaos, and he's half God, half human. So technically, I'm not from here. I, my consciousness just awoke here, so I'm here until I, I don't know what none of that bullshit means. But uh, <laughs> uh, okay, but okay, where are you? Where are you actually born at? I was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and then I was raised in Texas. When I turned two, I moved to Texas and was raised. What there. age you moved to Texas at? Like one and a half. Okay, and where where do you live at in Texas, or unless you live multiple places? It was in uh, Irving, Texas, and then I moved to Fort Worth. Okay, so what's known out in, you said Irving, Texas? It's like Dallas, Okay, like 15 minutes from Dallas. So you a Cowboys fan? Yeah. I mean, if, if, if I or say I'm not. not the, you're just not into football like that? Oh, no, I love football. If I say I'm not, some of my family will kill me. So. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So what was it like <laughs> living in Texas? Was it hot? Good? Hi, okay, I, I could figure hot. that. I, I meant more or less like growing up there, you know, upbringing, you know, were you in a wealthy home? Were you in a, you know, give me, as an outsider, put me in your shoes. So we actually grew up poor as a bitch, low key. Um, it has just been me and my mom. I was disowned by my father when I was born. So how'd that make you feel? That, and what do you mean by disowned? Did he kick you out? Did he said that I wasn't his and was not there? So he didn't claim you? Nah. And when's the last time you've seen your dad? Fuck, last year something like okay, that. Okay, so you so you have a relationship with him. You saw him last year? Eh, he's trying to. He wants to. When did he start trying to have a relationship with you? When you started, your know, music started going up. Yes. More? So do you think there might be a bigger plot behind it? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> at what age do you remember your dad quote unquote disowning you? Like, was it your basically your whole childhood? You might as well say. Pretty much. He wasn't there during my entire childhood. I know he went to prison for a while, and then when he got out, he still wasn't there. So, like, fuck it. Yeah. Is that a tough thing, growing up without a dad? Fuck yeah. Did you have someone else as a father figure or anything, or was it just, or was it just, or was it your mom did everything? So, it was just me and my mom originally, but my uncles, they were always a really big part. Uh, my mom has 13 siblings, so. Wow. 13? Yes. Yeah. That's a lot of food. <laughs> So I'm guessing the the Thanksgiving dinners were quite big, that. really big. Feel me? Yeah, were you like, where were you at the table? Like, were you like, kind of like the good part? Were you kind of like in the way back corner getting the scraps, uh, or how that worked? Fuck no, the kids used to have to eat like either on the floor, or, like on the, like the couch or something. Or, like you probably didn't care though that time. Fuck you man. just want some That's food. That's food. Oh god, yeah, that's what to eat. I'm good. Okay, so you grew up in Texas, essentially no father. You said you were you were poor, really poor. Poor as fuck. Okay, no. so. Did your how many and how many siblings do you have or do you have any I guess or so I have no full bloods but I have thirteen half bloods thirteen twelve twelve half bloods twelve uh, yeah my God. did so how many grew up like actually in the home with you zero so it was just you and your mom yep me and mom okay uh so how was it with your mom did did she have like jobs to support you or <laughs> did you move around a lot or so how did she, how did you make ends meet because you're a kid you couldn't really do nothing so mom she actually i give her props for that she worked her ass off i remember she used to work at mcdonald's when i was a kid you were probably getting a lot of mcdonald's food growing up huh oh god I do you like mcdonald's to this day I, fucking love McDonald's. I hate mcdonald's but fuck. shout out to mcdonald's for keeping you fed fuck i don't know how it looks like at mcdonald's no but so <laughs> I used to have to stay at the crib by myself since I was like three. So I you were watching like, yourself as a kid? Oh, God. Did that scare you? Not really. Really? I was just like. See, me, I remember dude. when I was a, a younger, you know, like 10, even 11, I didn't really like being home alone. I didn't really like not having someone there to like, you know, I was always thinking of the worst case situations. Like, oh, what if someone breaks in his house or what if this happens, that happens. See, I was like, I was one of those kids that like. I had a vivid imagination, so I was like, if somebody break in, I'm a karate chop in the fucking eyeballs. Just right like that, right oh, away. Man, don't do that. Okay, so, Broken Home, Texas, 
you and you said you moved in Texas. You lived in two different, different places. You said yeah. At first we were in Irving, and then we had moved to Fort Worth. Once mom got back which one was better to live at? Fort Worth, oh, so nice. What's the what's the difference? What made that place better? It's it's less city and more beauty, more trees. Do you not like big shit. cities? I love big cities now, but like back then, back you didn't? then yeah, not really. Okay, there okay. was quite a lot and a lot of stuff always going on, but like like what what kind of stuff? Like you know, like robberies and people getting killed. Did you ever get robbed? Fuck no. Never, not one time. Not one time. I almost did. My brother saved my ass when I was fourteen. Shout out, shout out to brother Sage for quote unquote saving your ass from oh, getting robbed. Oh God. I would hate to see you get robbed. <laughs> no, you know it, what I mean? it was it was it was it was a game. I don't know if anybody's ever played Point 'em Out, Knock 'em Out. But... Wait, one more time. Uh, it's called point them out, knock them out. I have not played that. We played a yeah. game maybe maybe it's similar to cops and robbers. No, nah. no, not similar. Totally different. It's basically. Oh, okay. I also played a game called tag sometimes. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, <laughs> but you know maybe that's just what happened in Iowa versus Texas tag. Continue oh, the book. So it's basically hey, where no phones, please. It it's basically where let's say Alex, my big brother. He points to anybody that's walking down the street. I have to run them down and beat their ass for no reason. Or just punch that them sounds in their like shit, you know? a kind of a sketchy game. It's Not something sketchy. I'd like to partake in. It's a very sketchy game. Almost got so, so did you play that game? Did you actually beat someone up? No, I punched them and tried to run. And they ran back after you? Oh, they ran back after you. Did they catch you? <laughs> yes. You know, I don't blame them for trying to beat you up. Me personally, mm. if I got slapped by some guy or punched, you said, I would be running too. I but as not a be child, happy. you know, I'm just like, yeah, just, this is fun. No, that's fair. You know I mean? I think we all did dumb things as a child. I mean, me, oh, me yeah. personally, I didn't, you know, go up and slap around people, but I did my fair share of dumb things. Mm-hmm. So, okay, you, you, uh, how do you go from Texas then back to now we're in Wisconsin? So when, when did you move up to Wisconsin? What age? Uh, 14. So about what freshman year of high school? Like, uh, like eight? No, thirteen. Thirteen. Was, okay, so seven, right at the edge of middle school. Yeah. So, so um, what what went through your mind? Go from why? Wait, why Texas, Wisconsin? You know, they're not exactly near each other. So we had a lot of family members pass away, including a majority of my uncles. So we knew that my uncle Lee he was that a tough thing. You know, losing basically your only father figure. Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine. Seven five figures. Yeah. And so we lost three of them. And uh, if you don't mind telling me, how did how did you lose them? Or is that something you don't want to talk about? Not really. Not really, okay. <laughs> but um, my Uncle Lee, he lived out here, and so we wanted to see some more family. So we are like, okay. Let's like maybe on. a little vacation? You're like, yeah. oh, let's go up to this, Wis- oh, supposed this, to be. this was... Wisconsin. Let's, <laughs> let's check this out up here, up in the north. You feel me? It you was know, supposed to be. The Packers play here. I don't know if you ever heard of them. You know yeah, I, mean? I think so. Yeah, those guys. Mm-hmm. No, nah, but yeah, it was supposed to be a vacation, and we got stuck here. So, how do you get stuck at a place exactly? Um, things didn't basically go the way we, it was supposed to. We were supposed to get an apartment when we first got here, but it got so it was planned to come up here then. Oh yeah, it was planned. Oh okay, yeah. you made it sound like stuck, made it sound like you weren't you know supposed to live here at all. No, nah, we were we were gonna be down here for a little bit and then come back home, but the go back home part didn't happen. So you had all your stuff moved up here. You were ready. You were okay. And then you moved up here. Where did you stay at in Wisconsin? Fond du Lac. Fond du Lac. Okay, that's an interesting yeah. place to stay at. Not a lot of people I know from there. Yeah. But, you know, there's I've heard some stories about Fond du Lac. Uh, you know? Whew. And is, when was the time you started? Uh, actually, no, we won't even get into that. How was in Fond du Lac? Being a young young man, you went to high school there, I'm assuming, too? Mm-hmm. How was it going to? I don't know what this high school is called, but Fond du Lac, Fond whatever. Du Lac High School. Fond du Lac High School. How was that? Fond du Lac High School. I'd love to hear all about. It. Fucking terrible. Uh, first came here and figured out what racism was in middle school. So you knew nothing about that in Texas. No. <laughs> so that was your first taste of Wisconsin's was racism. Bro, it, it was it was a doozy. When I was younger, I was very like I had a lot of friends, so like it was easy for me to talk to people. It was very multi like cultural out there. Mm-hmm. I came here and it I wasn't like that. No, nah. not at all. I would try to talk to people. So and not at Fond du Lac. They, they weren't, they weren't rocking with you like that. Fond du Lac. No, 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 no. Especially when I went to North Fond du Lac in the high school, there was only three black people in the whole school. And I was the whole school. The whole school was only three black people. Were you friends of all these black people? Yes. 
There you go. At least yeah, the brothers linked up all together. <laughs> yeah. And at least we were... got we got one positive thing out of this, I guess. At least. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. And... I, I guess the nice thing about that is, I guess probably y'all became a lot closer because y'all were dealing with the same oh, yeah. adversity, the same problems. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The school I went to in uh, Schwab and Green Bay, everyone called that we didn't have the same thing. So I didn't. Obviously, though, I'm a white man, so I don't experience it. So that's a little different. So okay, when uh, when you're in Fond du Lac, was did you experiment with music at all? When you were in Texas, like how, what was your, how did you first get into music? I guess is why I should ask you. Uh, my cousin Cortese, shout out to my cousin. Um, <clears throat> he would, this is back when um, the dude uh, with the big ass clock. He, the Flavor Flav? Flavor fucking Flav. My Dude cousin ass. met, fun fact, I hate to interrupt you, my cousin met Flavor Flav in Iowa at a oh, chicken right. restaurant. He was, uh, of course. he had did some promotion there. It was like a meet and greet. And he went up to him and recorded him. This was a long time ago. And he got really mad that he was recording him. Oof. So I don't know why exactly it was a meet and greet. I mean, you kind of would expect it, you know, to have it recorded. But yeah, he did not like it. And he told him to delete the video. Fuck. Yeah, it was. But that's it's my only story I know about Flavor Flav. I know he had the big clock and. Oh God, yeah, no, big dumbass. He was clock. he was a pretty funny dude. He was funny as fuck. But basically, uh, back when like MySpace and shit was the thing, my cousin, wow. okay, he used to <laughs> continue. <laughs> uh, he used to like play like Flavor Flav's music or whatever, and then he try to like rap to like the beats and shit, and he'd be trying to like get me to rap to it. And I'm a kid, and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. But you I'm don't know, like, you're just saying words. No, I'm saying words, and I'm but mm. I was like listen to the beats, and I'm like, bro, that's just kind of cool. And then so over time. I'm like listening to different like music as they come out, like Twista, Busta Rhymes, Eminem. That's like sounds like you like a lot of speed rappers or rappers oh, that yeah. rap faster. I love speed rappers. It okay. was always fascinating to me how fast because I used to beatbox. Beatboxing was a thing. For oh, me. okay, okay. So it always fascinated me how people could speed rap, and I'm like, bro, I'm gonna learn how to do that shit. And yeah, that's not really common anymore. That's nah. not really a thing no more. So yeah, so a lot of people wouldn't relate to that anymore. I know, it's weird. but I always enjoyed it because it, it takes skill. Not a lot of people can speed rap. Like, yeah, I don't know too many people who can do that. Yeah, you you have to genuinely be able to. So have wait, how old were you when all this was happening? Um, from like seven to like when I moved here around thirteen. So seven years old, you were trying to speed rap. Yep. God. Were you good or were you terrible? Fucking garbage. I would imagine that would. Feel like you weren't meant to be good at that point. Yeah, seven years old speed rapping just doesn't sound like something that you should be able to do. It was gibberish, but my beatboxing was progressively getting better, and I was like, okay. Okay, so you started making music between seven and thirteen. When was uh you ever record your first song or started taking it somewhat seriously? I guess, or not even seriously, just record a song. You 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 hit you know you hit a studio. I guess. So that happened when I was here. Um, uh, how old? At this point, I was like fifteen. Okay, Something so like you that. were in Fond du Lac. Mm-hmm. What made you say, I'm going to go find Stuart and actually record a song? Well, it didn't actually. It kind of fell into my hands. Because, like, so my mom dated this guy named Slim. And he shout was, out to Slim. Shout out to Slim. My boy locked up, but he only got six years left. Free yeah. Slim, man. I think we did. need you out. He did 15. <laughs> Don't throw six left. So Would you care to tell me what Slim did to get 15 years? Burned his ex's house down after she cheated on him. <laughs> Oh, you know, you burn someone's with house down with her in it. <laughs> he's lucky he's only getting that many years, he's honestly. Lucky. Honestly, at that point, he yeah. probably should be locked for life, but fuck it. Free Slim. <laughs> Free, Free Slim. Slim. I hope you hear this in the jail oh, cell right God. now, man, on the little tablet. Free Slim. No bullshit. Oh, yep. God. Free so, my boy. He used to make music, and I remember we used to go to this church. My mom used to talk to this guy named AJ. He made music. And so I used to go over to kick it with his son. Me and his son were around the same age. And, like, he would try to teach me how to, like, talk on, like, the microphone and then, like, do different sounds and shit. And then so my very first song I ever wrote was a gospel rap. Wow. Um, it's quite different when you make these days. Yeah. I'm good. Because I used to go, we used to go to church every, every week. It's good. And so that was the very first thing that I started doing. And I performed my gospel rap for my church. And then did they like it? They did actually like like a lot. And I don't think it was just because I was a kid. Like they were probably actually not a lot of people that can say they performed a rap song at church. Yeah, not uh, probably the most common thing ever. Yeah, but it was back when Lecrae was a very big thing. Lecrae and the Newsboys—they're like gospel rappers. And so that's when it really got me. Like, bro, people actually like the way I sound. Okay, I'm gonna keep doing this. And progressively, as Slim has tried to teach me stuff, put stuff on CDs. Then I'm like, okay, I need to find a real studio. The real deal. Yeah. No Holyfield. You feel me? And then so 
this is around the time, like, I went through some stuff through high school, whatever, when I got out of high school, when I finished everything, I'm 18. You jumped a little ahead. I said, when's the first time you ever went to a studio? Now you're saying 18, you said 15. No, 15 is when I got put into a studio. Okay, so you made your song, and did you start consistently making them, or was it just like a one-time thing? It was a one-time thing only because I could only go to AJ's house. So you didn't really start consistently recording music to how old were you, 18? 18. Okay, okay. 18, yep. And my very first me actually going to a producer to consistently make music uh, was with my boy Hey Jake. Shout out to Hey Jake. That is my boy. He is the very first person that helped me get my music out to the world on SoundCloud. Oh, God. Good old SoundCloud, man. Uh, we had, I dropped my song called Best of Shit and Roland featuring Hey Jake. And he used to have just this little, this little setup in his apartment out were here. Were they good songs or were they trash? They were actually good songs, just terrible quality. Oh, uh, yep. Yep. And, uh, terrible quality. And so, when Hey Jake was recording you? Yeah, yeah. So he just was not, you know. Well, no, like. Or just have cheap equipment or what? Yeah, type shit. Because it was back then. So back then, it was the shit to us. Like, that shit sounded cold. But oh, me and, compared now. Yeah, but me and him have both elevated so far up that, like, yeah, we're like, right. bro, that shit was garbage. But it had good, like, it was a good idea right, type right, right. shit. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. And then, shit, we consistently just put stuff out, SoundCloud. And I'm like, bro, I really want to make a career out of this shit. And so did he. So I'm like, but cool. So what made you decide to take it to a point where you're like, I'm going to try to make this my life, my career, my... Cause some people just make music for fun. That's as far as it goes. What made you say, hey, I want to make this as a passion of life? So but... as I grew up with my music, um, like I said, my uncles were a really big part of my life. I used to, you know, go to them and like, you know, rap my songs to them and shit. And they'd be like, oh, that's really good. Nigga. Try to blah, get blah. some wisdom. Yeah, right. you feel me? And, you know, every single one of them, every time I'd show them something, progressively as I got older, they would always tell me, bro, make sure you use your gift. Make sure you use your gift. And when I'm younger, I don't really know like what that means, but I'm like, okay, I got you. Not everyone has that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I was like, well, you know, okay, I got you. I got you, whatever, whatever. And then. The final straw was when my uh, my uncle T Love had passed away when I was eighteen, um, and I remember I used to talk to him a lot about like how me and Jake did our thing, whatever. Like I really want to do something with this, and he sat me down. And he talked to me for a while, and he was like, "I really want you to use your gift so we can get the hell up out of here." And I know I like when I think about it, he's like fucking around, but like he was serious. Like he, all of our family separated. And we came from like nothing, so I know he wants us to get up out of here and get rich. And so I told him. So is that motivation when he said that? Extreme. Like you're like, all right, we got to get out of here. I'm gonna be the man to put the whole team on my back, and I'm gonna do it. Extreme. And it hit, like it hit different when it came from him, and then from the rest of my uncles. But it hit way different when he finally passed away too. And I'm like, bro, I lost all of them. And I told all of them that I would do this shit, so now I got to do this shit for them. Simple as that. All right, so this is a big question I had to ask. So why do you feel like people should listen to Young Sage? Because I could listen to NBA Youngboy, Rod Wave, Kevin Gates, anyone else you can name in the rap game. Why should I take time out of my day to listen to you? Because a couple reasons. One, I'm probably one of the most versatile artists you'll ever meet, including ones that are big names. Okay, what if I don't care about that? Fuck. Yeah, then. Because um, some people only want to listen to drill. Some people only want to listen to lock rap. Some people only want to listen to certain things. And I can do all of them. Okay, but why? Okay, example, let's say lock rap, right? Mm-hmm. You what you do. I want to listen to Uzi. I want to listen to Melly. I want to listen to whoever mm-hmm. else you want to name off. Mm-hmm. Why should I listen to you instead? Because my cadence. And or and maybe not instead. Why should I put you also in there? Because my cadence and style is different and unique. Kind of on par with theirs. But if maybe, it's unique, then how's it on par with theirs? I said kind of because okay. I don't want to put Tell myself me. too above them. But like, do you think you are above them? In skill, yes. So, Cadence, you, so you're above. telling me you think you're better than Uzi? You think you're better than skill wise? Yes. Okay, so you're on record saying you're. I'm on record saying I have more skill than Uzi. Okay. But he has better sound and cadence than me. He's smarter when it comes to the industry. Okay, so why? So you're saying I should listen to you from a lock rap because you are better than Uzi? Is that yes? Okay. All right, I just want to I just want to clarify <laughs> how I want to go off about this. So 
<laughs> when I consider, when I get I'm in I'm my car, you. you know what I'm saying? I know why I should listen to you. You feel me? Okay, so how, as an artist, do you think you would make it to the next level to be in the conversation with them? Because right now, you know, no one's putting you in that conversation. I hate to break it to you if you don't know that, right? But no one is. No, yeah. So how are you going to get to that level to be in that conversation? There's a lot of local artists, a lot of, you know, who knows? Maybe Uzi watches. You know, anyone. How are you going to be in this conversation with these people? How are you going to make that happen? There's a lot of local artists who could watch us and say, oh, okay, well, Young Sage is more popular than me. He has better streams, you know, you know, more fans. But how are you going to get up to the next level? Because I'm assuming this is not the level you want to stay at. Nah, I know. I think in order to get somewhere higher, I'll have to continue to elevate my skill level. And Okay, why uniqueness. do you have to do that if you already have more talent than Uzi? Why, why do you need to worry about your talent anymore? Well, because you can never have too much talent. And you can never well, be too new, unique. Well, if... If you're you're saying you're got to worry, we're not even not worry, but put more work and be more talented to make it, right? Mm -hmm. But you're already more talented than someone else who's made it. That doesn't really add up very well. Well, it sounds like to me, which I've said before, is talent doesn't matter. Exactly. I was just gonna say. Now look, now this is how I was gonna explain. So, that. but then how are you gonna blow up by gaining more talent? This is, I'm just not registering right now to me. <laughs> so look, right. Okay. This is why. So nowadays, please educate me. <laughs> Sadly, nowadays, talent does not matter. So then how are you going to blow up more by being more talented? Right, right. Because, so considering nowadays, in order to blow up, you either have to have lots of money or lots of connections. In order to get lots of connections, you have to travel to the bigger places in order to get those connections because those connections are not going to talk to smaller people. So it sounds like if I add all that math up, you need some money. Well, it, you feel me? Now, from there... In order to get more money, obviously, you need to do two things, job and save up, or you end up getting money, a lot of money from like a st your streams from a song that blows up. So in order for me to do that, I have to have so much talent, considering I don't have the money or connections yet. I have to have so much talent that somebody's like. I feel like bro. you have some connections. From I know. What, I know. I, have from some what connections. I understand from your social media. You know, I I pay attention out here. <laughs> from what I understand, you have some connections. No, I do have a shit ton of connections, which is good. But you know, richer people are always busy as hell, so they don't always have time to. That's true. Yeah, I got you, but I'm gonna do this. this rich this, people this. only worry about money. They're not worrying about anything else. You feel me? So, so you need to you need to show them that hey, I can make you money. You feel me? You know but saying? first, they have to answer the phone. But yeah, so That's fair. <laughs> oh god, so like you don't know how many people I've like I've seen in person when I go out when I went out to like L.A. or Miami, and I could talk to them in person. And oh yeah, you hot? Woo, hit me on Insta. You hit them on Insta, but they never fucking check their Insta. They don't check they the DMs. They forget about they it. They see this. They say, "Who's this young?" Ah, I don't even care anymore. So, yeah. They don't even finish the sentence of your name. They're already <laughs> off to the next thing. All right, Sage. So I'm gonna be straight up with you. I would say you're one of the most popular rappers. Local rapper, whatever you want to call it, in the area. I'd say mo most people know you. Yes. But if I go on the street and talk to them, it's one or two things. They either love you or hate you. That's what, at least what, from what I've seen. Yeah. Why is it that way? Because I don't see it for everyone. Why do people love you and why do people hate you? Man. So a lot of people. Because I see both. And yeah. I have my opinions and I have my say so, but I want to hear from you. So a lot of people start with the love part. A lot of people love me because, well, one, I'm a cool ass dude. You feel me? I kick it with people, we talk about anime. If you watch anime, I'm very relatable. I can adapt to basically any type of situation that I'm put in with a group of people. So, and I keep it real with people at all times. I give the best advice. You that keep I 100? Can. I keep it a buck, bitch. See, I keep 1,000, but continue. Fuck. <laughs> so, and yeah, I'm very like, people can talk to me about whatever. And then I'm going to just keep it, I'm going to keep it 100 with you at all times. And I speak real shit and relatable shit. But people also hate me for either two reasons. Talk to me. Either one, because I fuck they bitch, or... Wait, wait, can you say it one more time for the mic? I just want to make that very clear. <laughs> I want to hear that. Probably because I fuck they bitch. Or okay. two, because I've noticed, that especially out here, people do not like when you call them out on their bullshit. Okay, what... Maybe not. I don't want to say who you don't say names, but what would be bullshit you would call someone out on? Like, what, and what gives you the right to call anyone out? I mean, it doesn't, because, but freedom of speech. So you just because you have the freedom to talk just like everyone else, that means you can just call people on shit? Because some people consider that rude. Yeah. 
Are you a rude I person? Be, I can be rude. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very like outspoken and eccentric. I will just say whatever's on my mind. Some people, don't yeah, like some that. people don't like that. Some people don't like that. I don't like that. The fuck. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> if you ain't got nothing, but like for me, they ain't got to do with you. You know, get on my face. I'm no, yeah, about. like it's different. Like I don't just butt in people's business. Oh, that's what it made it sound like. Sound oh like, no, sound no, no. like there'd be two people walking in the mall. Talking about their oh. shoes, you'd be like, "Oh, your shoes are trash." <laughs> I, mean, you know I mean, my like intrusive If someone thought. said that to me, I, you know, I would. No, yeah, who the fuck are you? Why nah. you talk to me like that? And you know, I would tell them I have more <laughs> money than them. You it's, know what I mean? I would just start acting out. It's more so of like. For a small example, let's say you came to me about you and your bitch arguing, uh-huh. and you did some fuck shit. You gonna expect me to be on your side because 100%. you're my homie. You feel me? I, but, I I hope you are on my side. I, but I'm the type of nigga that I'm gonna keep it a buck because I fuck with you. I'm be like, nah, you bogus. You cheated on that bitch. You foul as a bitch. And then you gonna <laughs> get mad at me and be like, well, fuck you, then, nigga. Woo, woo, woo. And then now you hate me because I wouldn't I say that because I, you know, well, you know, you know canceled. Get canceled. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I, but now you hate me because, woo. Hey, and the also third reason of the hate is because of rumors. Either bitches that don't get the privilege to fuck on me. Really? Or so nigga. you're cut like that. I'm cut like that. Okay. Stand on 10 toes and continue. 11. But yeah, um, bro. <laughs> or, <laughs> or niggas that hate. Now, that's the biggest one. A lot of niggas hate on me out here because, like I said, I read mean, the fuck they bitch or I'm doing better than they are. Which is A lot of people sad. don't like when another man's doing better than them, especially music. A lot oh, of people God. do get envious. I've seen it with my own eyes, but I'm just you necessarily have a lot of artists, you know. And I, uh, I always say... Me, if I was an artist, you know, I made music at points in my yeah. life or of anything. Stop the if, <laughs> if, if I saw someone doing better than me, me personally, I would either A, try to be like, I'm going to try to outdo them. I won't be mad that I try to outdo them. Or two, if anything, I'd probably do two is I would try to click up with them or at least be like, yo, okay, bro. Like, I see you got more streams. I see you got more fans or what, whatever the case may be or better performer, or whatever it is. How how would you go about that? You know, maybe you mm-hmm. ask for help of anything. You feel me? And a lot of people out here, they just get mad and just hate on that. Well, why is that? Do you think? Envy, because they don't have. You think that's everywhere or just here? Everywhere. Okay. But considering I, out of the places that I've been that I've experienced, it's very high here. Very high. Out of a lot of places that I've traveled to, I've noticed that there is a lot of envy here because here no one is doing anything with their lives except for getting drunk, getting high, and partying. A lot of people get drunk here. A lot of people get drunk here. There's I've noticed of, there's that a lot of people what I call big bar guys. Big bar, big guy. bar guy. Shout out to Tay Tay. But yeah, <laughs> big bar guy. But yeah, it's dude niggas hate on me because they're not doing what I'm doing, and I can't control that. But yeah. I could, I could be like, I've I haven't gotten too much hate just because I feel like I'm a pretty uh, you know, I'm I'm just cordial of everyone. But I have gotten some hate for, you know, whatever this may, you know, they'll be like, oh, blah blah blah, this is fake, this is fake. Oh, you're not mm-hmm. cut like that, you know. I, I'm mm-hmm. very authentic. What you see is what you get. You know what okay. I'm saying? Go, go. My social media is not a cat page. You know what I mean? You'll see everything I do. You know what I mean? If you, you see that I really, you know, I, I host shows, I meet people, I network and that's just what I do. And I just try to help artists and help people try to go up in their careers. And especially, I feel like, especially the hate comes to me from artists, different artists, a lot of different artists that are upset that I'm doing things that they're not like there was a whole feud that had happened when i was gonna open up for soldier boy big shout draco out to, uh, shout out to big Appleton. draco yeah who's some other artists you lost actually wait tell me this story you want to tell me what the feud was over or is that kind of it uh it was it was basically because people were hating that i was opening up for soldier boy when everyone else felt like they deserved it more but in reality like if you've seen the things that i've done around the u.s including my competitions you'd understand why yeah it's fair uh, let's hold on the concerts and competitions, and I know that's a whole other segment you'll probably want to talk about. Okay, so tell me more about you know your competitions, but actually before that, tell me uh, who's all the arts you open up for, or performed with, or however you want to exactly word it. I don't know how you personally look at it if it's open up for or collabed with on a show. You know what I mean? No, so I've done actually a lot. I've done a lot of stuff in different parts of well, the U.S. Name, name, name quick, name quick. Uh, CT Grizzly, King Louie, NLE Chopper, Montana 300, Lil Dirk. And what, uh, what cities were these all in? Fuck, these were they all large. Wisconsin or are they all? Nah, there's some in like Minnesota, like Minneapolis. Okay. Uh, How was that? Was that dope? Wait, who it was, was it in Minneapolis? Dope. I think that was NLE Chopper. Okay, yeah, how was that? 
that shit was pretty. Actually, it was dope. I got a big fan base out there because NLE but got to meet NLE. He was. That's dope. a big artist to open up for. <clears throat> pretty big venue, I'm assuming. Oh okay, god, it was pretty fat. Oh, bro. Okay. Uh, opened Continue. up for Lil Durk in Philly. Oh wow. Uh, okay. Philly was nice, actually. I really. Which what show do you like more, Dirk and Philly or Chop in Minnesota? Dirk and Philly because it was more people. Okay. Right, Some people don't care about this amount of people. Oh, I love that. And the okay. stage was fat. All right, those are the bigger two you name off. Who was the other people you said? Um, King Louie in Arizona, T Grizzly. That was out here in Wisconsin. Okay. Um, I was supposed to open up for Soulja Boy in Green Bay and Polo G in North Dakota. Those two, uh, why it just didn't happen? Yeah, I just it didn't. some shit on, on the other. Yeah, on the other side of they shit. Any anyone else? Are those all the artists? Uh, there's some more I just can't think of them right now. I've done a lot. Right. No, it's dope. What would you say? Do you think it's uh, is that something you kind of pride yourself in saying you've opened okay. up for bigger names like that, Hell or is yeah. that Hell some yeah. people that look at it and they're just like, oh, it's another man? Ah, uh, no, nah, that shit was fun. It was dope. Great experience. It helped me get the fan base I did hit, like I did get. Do you prefer to perform in state or do you like to travel more? I love traveling. Oh, I fucking love traveling, bro. It was back like when I first started my career. I was traveling a lot, a lot. Back when I was working uh, with my old manager named Eddie August. And that's back when... What happened with that? Why is it old manager? Uh, long story short, uh, he had another artist named Rico Santana for 100. And he basically just started to focus more on him than he did on me. And so I just said, you know what? Like, you know, focus on him. I'm going to just go off and do my own thing. What is uh? <clears throat> what's that artist up to these days? You have no clue. Um, actually, I have no clue. Well, Rico Santana four hundred, I believe that was your name. I may yep, have never yep. heard of you, but I hope you're doing the most you can for your career. Yeah, because I want you to win, and I hope you know that. Because I want every artist to win. Yeah, I mean, I hope you do. He's a talented dude. I'm real. And also, now I just learned you're also a talented dude, so even better. <laughs> but uh you also said competitions um yeah okay tell me about that so as of right now so competitions have always been fun to me because like it helps me figure out where my skill level is at compared to hundreds of different artists from different places around the world yeah um and <clears throat> one of my very first ones i did was in chicago um Chirac. yeah Chirac, come on, bro and um i went out there and i won that bitch first try like how'd well, that make you feel so it was your first competition ever did and you walked out there you were probably nervous as hell you probably thought you were gonna get big dog low-key <laughs> you went out there and you won it as a rookie how'd yeah. that make you feel Fuck was that. there a lot of people there a smaller one or? it was like 50 50 around people? 50 50 artists oh 50 artists yeah people oh, okay so like around out of 50. 50 artists you got number one on number your one. first ever competition and i had one song and it was my song talking shit so your ego song. probably just went through the fucking roof after that <laughs> that huh? shit was hard you I probably thought like, you were the best thing since sliced bread oh god all right Can you still bread. feel that way to an extent okay so not the best things since Rouse or some bread, other competitions but... you said a lot and you know our viewers Probably love to hear about every single one, but me personally, I got other shit to do today. So let's hear, just rattle off a couple. Uh, well, my biggest competitions that I've done were ones in Miami and LA. It was okay. for coast to coast. How uh, many coast to coast shows you won and how many cities? I've done two. Or are you I've only won. one? Is it only one? Well, yeah, so there's only one a year. Okay. And I've done two and I won both. I got top five in one and then won one. So you, the first so you only. Like what cities? I know how it works is a lot of different uh, cities. Have you won like just one city? The first place I got, yeah, was in L.A. Okay. And the second one that I did, I got top five in Miami. Okay, so not none in Wisconsin. No, no, coast to coast. They don't. They don't. The, the finals are never in Wisconsin. Oh, I was talking about the finals necessarily. Oh, I was saying, period? have you won any others? Like what all cities have you won in? Period. Oh yeah yeah, uh, Milwaukee. Okay. Um, twice. Um, and then one in Arizona. Oh, okay. Um, I feel like this is gonna be a lot now, just the way you're thinking. So man, much. yeah, just just know so, that competitions all around the U.S. I have everyone won. and beaten. I, I actually hold a record, uh, as far as oh, I know. Oh wait, 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 hold up. We're putting this on record on that he record. holds a record on record. So okay, Guinness... what is this record that you claim to hold? Because it'd be a real shame if I look into this and this is all cap. Because <laughs> Guinness figures out all cap out there. I hope Guinness is listening. As far as I know, from what I've researched. Uh -huh. I am the first artist in history. 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 
that has beaten over eight now eighteen hundred artists around okay. the U.S. in a music competition. So you've beaten over eighteen hundred artists. Is that just all over the United States? Or are you just saying one state? Or all you... over the U.S. Okay, all together. from from the Floridas to the mm-hmm. L.A.s. You said. Mm-hmm. Wisconsin, to Chicago, to Chicago, to Arizona, All, to Arizona, every, okay, every, everywhere, anywhere now, how, that I've been, anywhere that I've touched, I've won. So, what, how does that make you feel that you did that? Is that something that like fucking awesome? Do you think <laughs> other artists could do that around here, or you think you're the only one? I know a couple artists that could do that. I know okay. a decent amount, a handful of artists that could do this. Do you same respect thing. a lot of artists around your area? Or do you think most of them are trash? Or or I guess give me your insight on that. Mm, I feel like there is a lot of talent in Wisconsin, but there is also a lot of flops in Wisconsin. So I feel like both. it's 75% flops, 25% talent. Hey, you know what? At least there's 25%. But <laughs> now since we're talking about that, um, you know, I do this for every person that's on this show. I need, not in order, <clears throat> your top five local artists. You don't got to put them in order, but... You got to, and I, you know, you're going to sit here and think, but I don't want you to think all day. So you're going to leave some people off. You're going to hurt some people's feelings. Some of your homies are going to mess you. Say, damn, bro, you left me up the top five because we will clip this. And this will be out there. So I need your top five right here. Not in order, no rank. Just My top what, five. I, we're all listening. My top five, and I'll give a short explanation why. Okay, an explanation. We never had that with anyone else doing this so far. <laughs> so top five artists, not in specific order. Okay. Monte. Blackheart Monte, shout out Monte. Okay, because Blackheart uh, Monte slash Midnight Monte. Slash okay, Midnight he's on. Monte, he made yeah. the list. Um, because he just he has the code ass style. His style is just is is different, and he's consistent. Period. That he's he's the most probably the, one of the most consistent dudes I know out here. All right, that's one. We got Cully's whack. Okay. We got Cully. I wish he had more confidence in himself because the dude has bars. Bars yes, for days. Fucking bars. I will. I can honestly say. Can he outbar you? No. No. But he I can't can, outbar you. No. But I can honestly Maybe a second say, place. Uh, third. Third. Okay. Third. And I would say third to AMD. Okay. AMD is the only artist in Wisconsin that I can say is second to me when it comes to bars. That nigga has bars. So we got one Midnight Monte, Black Heart Monte, whatever you want to call him. Collie's whack, AMD. We've got mm-hmm. two other spots left. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're getting stuff right here. Some people are going to get left off. There's no other way to put it. Uh, for fourth, uh, JD makes music. Okay. My homie JD, the main. Are you saying that just because he's your homie, or do you believe nope, that? Nope, I believe oh, it. I, and that's about all these people. Yep. I don't know if your friends always. No, I'm going to keep it a buck. My homie, no, yeah. I'm going to keep it a buck. The main reason I fuck with JD is because he speaks real shit. So there's and no cap. All of raps. JD's music, there is no I love no some cap, cap rap. I love me some cap yeah, rap, we, man. I want you to talk it. about how you ramp in someone's house, did this and that while you're sitting there on GTA. I want to hear all about it. Yeah, we we know. Trust me. No, <laughs> with, with JD, bro, he's not going to cap. And he literally speaks from his heart when he makes his music. His music comes straight from his heart, and I respect that more. All than right, one else. spot left. And for the last spot. There's a couple people in the back of my head, but I want to see who you pick. <laughs> and the last spot. I'm choosing between two. To be honest. You want to make it six? Just make it easy for you? We can do that for you if you want. Just for well, you, though. You feel me? Uh, My boy T. Wood. T. Wood? Oh, God. T. Wood is another one that he speaks real shit. His shit comes straight from the heart. And he's like, he has he has a sound. He can't sing for shit, but he has a sound <laughs> <laughs> that's like, okay, I see what you was trying to do. And, bro, I feel like once he gets his voice together, he really going to, like, he going to pop off with that shit. But do you think his music is good then, or are you saying no because he can't oh, yeah, sing his, no, shit? Oh, yeah, his music is good as a bitch. I mean, bro, he just can't sing. Uh-huh. And, uh, but that's my nigga, though. He speak real shit, and he low-key got bars, too, I mean, bro. Okay, and you said you had a six person? Yeah, my little nigga Ricky. I mean, bro, I forgot what he, his rap name is, but... Ricky, that little nigga got bars and he has heart. He's got heart and bars. Since he met me, bro, he's, he's, I've watched him and it was crazy to see because at first, like, people hit, I'm sure people hit you up all the time. I like, get bro, hit by every artist in the area at yeah, some point. You feel me? They, bro, I'm I love the best. It. I'm woo woo. I'm like, okay, all right, I guess, you know, whatever. But since he's continuously showed me shit, each and every time, it just gets better and, and better, better and better. better. And I'm well, like, Ricky, you hear this? Uh, yeah. Sage mode thinks you get better and better and better. So maybe 
Anything about yeah, who knows? You could surpass him, maybe even. Anything possible. I don't know about all that. You yeah. don't know about all that. <laughs> no, but yeah, um, bro. Yeah, now that's my top five slash six. All righty, top five slash six. Oh, okay, now give me three artists you'd want to do a feature with. Only three though. Only three. Monte. Oh, I wasn't talking locally. I meant on the national scale. But... Oh, period. Oh, but, but yeah, sure. We'll do Monte too, but uh, yeah, he'll you be did. your fourth. Yeah, you you already said me. his name now. Yeah. Uh, Ski Master Slum God. Why? Uh, because he has fucking bars. He's, so he's, 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 bars. In, he's in my top five favorite rappers and his cadence is crazy. All right. Ski Mask. Uh, Trippy Red. He just has a crazy ass sound. Like his sound can bounce from anywhere it wants to. Ski Mask, Trippy Red, and who's number three? And Juice World, if he was still here. If we're not, if we're not talking about alive, we'll, we'll, we'll put Juice in there. Juice, okay, yeah, Juice. I need that, and now, that's self-explanatory. Now, if you only pick one of the streams, what do you pick? Juice. I kind of thought you're gonna say that. You know, that was a thought in my head, but you know, I can't assume what you're gonna say. You know what I mean? So, all right, Sage, what's your next couple moves? What's the next things coming up? Tell me all about it. So, my next move as of right now. Um, as you know, my biggest song right now is called Hocus Pocus Part 2. Yes, sir. Uh, it's at almost 150,000 streams on Spotify. The last streams. You feel me? So my goal is to get at least one more song to that or get it to a million streams so I can get signed to a record deal potentially from Sony Records. Sony's a big dog label right there, man. Big dog label. A lot of artists have been out of Sony. A lot of artists. And from a source that we will not speak of, if I can get one of those songs to a million streams, I do get a $2 million record deal. And oh, he's saying the numbers out there, too. So Big two-piece. So. All the people listening to this right now and seeing this, stream this song. And you know what? This man will get two M's, and then you know he'll do that? Give you more good music. You feel me? And other than that, I do want to drop a secondary project, something, like I said, that's on par with Hocus Pocus Part 2, and it will be coming soon. I won't say What's the, the project name. called? I want to say the name, but just know it'll be a single, and a lot of people have been waiting for this single for a long Can time. Can I get, like, a hint, maybe? Wish that you would love me the way that I need to be loved. Don't worry. All right. All people you... that know will know. I don't know if they deserve that. I'll, I'll tell you this. If you, if you get Hocus Pocus Part 2 to 200,000 streams within the next week. It's a lot to ask for. Watch my Instagram post. Give is it this, one is week. This all part of the interview right here? It's all part of the interview. 200,000 streams in one week. Watch my Instagram and you will see the name of the single I will drop next. I'll give you that. I'm just so confused. What's going on? Because you like said something <laughs> from over there. I fucked my head up. Like, hey, is this hey, part of it? Hey, that's in it. That's in it. That's in it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I fucked my head up. I'm like, am, I, am I always still going? When I asked the question, because what do you call it? Said Taylor said you should be saying stuff behind the camera. So like, yeah. No, that would actually oh, okay, give sorry, like I good. My like, head up. I was trying to implement it, but my bad. My apologies, audience. If this somehow comes in the interview, I fucked up. <laughs> We're not all perfect. He didn't roll with the punch. Yeah. Taylor, we just talked about it. And I said, all right, I'll do that. He wouldn't yeah. roll with the punches. my scratch. A scratch. All right, ready? Mm. I don't know what I'm saying next, though. Um, we were just talking about the next project I had. Hey, I'll just... Oh, I said, can we, can we get a... Yeah, 15 seconds. Can we get a little 15 seconds? Yeah. Yeah, and 200,000, and I told her, 200,000, I'll give you the name of the song. So I don't have to ask him? No. Word. So you can just go on to whatever you want, though. Oh, God. Oh, man, good. That was the next project. Next and... project, you said the song name, and I asked... Yeah. He said what he thinks. I'll cut it right there and then now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not much more to say. Just say you. Just be like, all right, well, we've been looking forward to that 200,000. Yeah, all, right, all, right, all, right. all right. Three, two, one. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing all these streams flooding in. Oh, God. I want to see this, you know, go up to 100 million. You oh, know, God. fuck a 200,000. Little you know baby I mean? numbers. There you go. Okay. Little baby's the goat, man. Other than young boy, but that's a conversation for another day. Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, uh, you got any shout outs you want to do? Got anything other little other uh things you want to say before I get up out of here? Sure do. Shout out to my boy Pablo, and bro, to my boy Guy Z. And then too, they got some skill too. Young Day definitely got some skill, and bro. Shout out to all my brothers. 
Monty, YK Monty. Oh God, and uh, my boy, uh, my boy Tay Tay. <laughs> Shout out to Tay Tay, man. Big, uh, biggest day drinker right now. <laughs> but uh, all right, y'all. You know we got shit to do the rest of the day. But I appreciate you, Sage, for coming through once again. But this is your boy Gut of Gut Talk, and uh, keep tapping in, man. That's helped me pay the bills. Hey. Young Sage, I-